Good evening, everybody. This is Kay Aubrey Shemaine. I'm the owner and director of Grand Adventures Ranch, a holistic equine wellness center in Sonoida, Arizona. And this is our Always Shine Your Light, our weekly education uh, series where we talk about equine energy points, light therapy, and photopuncture, which is acupuncture with light. And this week, we're going to talk about the happy hat and why horses love it so much and why it is so necessary. So the pole cap or pole therapy cap, or it's gone by a few different names, is a neoprene cap that puts red light directly into the areas around the horse's ears, the pole of the horse. And this helps to treat the muscles and ligaments and attachments, as well as the energy points that are in and around the horse's pole. A typical treatment is maybe 20 minutes, though the, for some of us that do a lot of therapy, every time we're doing a photopuncture session, we just put a happy hat on every time anyway throughout the entire session because it keeps the horses relaxed and it helps so much at one of the most fragile areas of the horse and because it calms the horse. So this is looking down from above the horse. We can see that very narrow area right behind the jaw all the way up to the top of the cranium. And this area is very susceptible to physical stresses. It also may be the most undertreated area of the body. Lots of people have their horses get chiropractic or massage. And often they, they may adjust the neck as it were, but they don't really treat the pole. And by what I what I mean by that is they don't come in and treat these areas right up behind the ears. More often the chiropractor is focused back here, which is good, okay? But you see where all these, these muscles attach is right up here behind the ear. And relaxing that can make a huge difference to the quality of life for that horse. Plus all of the muscles coming up from the jaw for TMJ also attach right here under the ear. So treating that area can be incredibly important. Excuse me while I switch pens. All right. So lots of different chiropractic stressors can cause subluxations. And a subluxation is just a chiropractic misalignment of two or more vertebrae, okay, so down the spine of the horse. And subluxations put a lot of uh, pressure on the nerves, they disrupt the, the messages that go along the spinal cord, and they also disrupt the energy or the chi that flows along the body. And we're going to look at that in a few minutes. Some of the things that cause this are any kind of torque that happens to the cervical vertebra often from struggling against a tied rope or maybe being tied into a trailer and the brakes get slammed on and the horse ends up turking their neck. Uh, sudden jerks on the reins. Horse is going in a straight line and all of a sudden somebody pulls on from one side or the other. Even being forced to carry their head incorrectly in some idea that, that is really a wrong idea of what proper uh, carriage of the horse, what a horse should go with, many horses are forced to bend their head at the pole as opposed to between C1 and C2. And that can also cause really major chiropractic stress. The pole is actually a big bottleneck for energy flow or chi flow. We can see here in this picture that we have each one of these different little uh, um, abbreviations, BL is bladder, GB gallbladder, TH triple heater, all of these different energetic meridians, which are energy pathways that flow through the body, they all are affected in some way by traveling through the pole into the face. All of the yang meridians, each meridian is in a pair, it has a yin and a yang. The yang is considered the more male, the more outward of the two meridians, bladder, gallbladder, stomach, large intestine, small intestine, triple heater, and governing vessel. These are all meridians that are considered 
yang, and they all have a yin sister. So when you affect the yang meridian, you affect its sister, the yin meridian. Well, all six of the major yang meridians plus the governing vessel, all of them travel through that very tight area around the pole into the head. And that means that every energy flow in the body is affected by the pole. Some of the most important points that we see here that are affected are right up here, right where I was saying, right behind the ears. The governing vessels 16 and 20, which are right down the midline, very important for calming, for mental clarity, for bringing energy up into the body. Bladder 10 and gallbladder 20 on either side there, those highly affect the structure and the, all of the attachment of those muscles right there from the TMJ all the way to the muscles running up the neck. So again, both chiropractically and for energy flowing through the body, we see huge things just coming in in that narrow spot right behind the ears. So how does a happy hat make a horse happy? Well, in addition to just relaxing the neck and make it feel better, and those of us who have ever had a tight neck know how much we feel better when we get some relief. It treats three specific points, the governing vessel 20, 24, and yin tang, which is that point right between the eyes, the third eye. All of those points are affected by the happy hat, puts light directly into them. And that helps increase circulation to the area, increase flow of chi, and greatly calms the horse almost dramatically. Within minutes of putting the, horse, the, the hat on, we see the horse yawning, stretching, often peeing. The geldings will drop their penis and relax. So this is a very typical horse after a treatment with a happy hat. <laughs> As you can see, he's very relaxed. So when do we use a happy hat? We use it before and after therapy sessions, during. We use it anytime we have strenuous exercise, before or after. We use it whenever we have a horse that's nervous or upset, especially during therapy, but maybe just we're going to be going to a new place or new conditions have this horse stressed. I love having my the, the responses come back from customers when they've used it, when they've first teaching a horse how to collect correct, correctly and they need more flexibility at the pole. The horses don't tighten up. They're able to bring their hindquarters under. They love using that happy hat before and after. During sheath cleaning, many geldings will just relax and drop and it can help with the whole process and keep them calmer. And then of course with any treatment for lameness because what many people don't recognize is that Chiropractic problems at the pole or even energy flow blockages at the pole can be one of the primary reasons for lameness in any of the feet. So hind quarter or four quarter lameness can come from a blockage at the pole. So it's just tonight was a very quick one. We're going to answer some questions and so on, but I just want to introduce people to the pole cap or otherwise known as the happy hat. This is what it looks like. It's $550, and I've used one for over a decade, so they last a long time. They're very, very much worth the investment. You can find it at our website at photopuncture.com, or you can go straight to this um, URL. All right, thanks. We're going to open this up to everybody. Hello, everybody. Um, Sandra, Sandy, you are still, you've self-muted, so if you decide you want to ask a question, please come on. Okay, any questions on tonight's topic? Oh, I'm not that good. Come on, guys, there's got to be some questions going on. Well, actually, Kay, um, this, you know this is Lynn, probably. Um, I, can you talk a little bit about um, the benefits for cribbers? Sure. Yeah, I probably should have touched more on that. That's a good point. Hold on. I'm dying to get one for Jack. <laughs> Let's go up here. All right. So cribbing is thought to primarily be 
uh, a problem from a tightness in the jaw and directly related to this triangle of muscles that connect right here under the ear. All right, Both this one coming up from the bottom as well as the attachments over here and this massive nerve that comes right in here under the ear here is really affected by it. And cribbers, when they start biting down or wind sucking, they're biting on oh, almost anything, pipe, wood, whatever they can find. What they're doing is they're releasing endorphins to, re to relieve pain. Sometimes this happens from nervous stress. Sometimes it happens from their teeth being incorrectly um, aligned. But after a while, no matter if you've rectified the situation, their teeth are now balanced, their chiropractic has been balanced, they're no longer stressed, they've become an addict. And they're an addict to just basically morphine. The endorphins that they're releasing are pure a morphine-like substance in the body. And it feels good and they figure out how to get high for free. So it can be difficult to release. And um, some, there are a lot of different thoughts to it, but especially if you can catch cribbing early on. I know we've had many different reports of the happy hat really helping with cribbing, especially when it's cribbing coming to nervous anxiety. So they get on the hat, it's calming those points down the midline, it's getting their brain back for them, and it's helping relieve the pain so that they don't have to maintain that same bad behavior and get high. But with a horse like, for those who don't know, Lynn has a horse who's been a cribber, a very good, effective um, addict for many years. And, yeah. and I was say, what if the stoner? <laughs> yeah, he's a, he can he can definitely keep himself stoned that way. And so, um, uh, it's likely a happy hat would help with the 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 bad effects from cribbing. Okay, because that the, the chewing itself and biting on things causes a tightening and, and an overdevelopment of these muscles of the jaw. It can also cause teeth imbalances, the same thing that might have started them in the first place. So it can help a lot. Whether it will reverse the behavior is another question. So, yeah, no, I, yeah, there's, I wouldn't necessarily expect that, but I just think it would be great to be you know, doing something nice for him that would help. So. Oh, yeah, no, exactly. I think it would be a fabulous thing for him. I think the happy hat is just one of the basic tools that should be in everybody's toolkit. No matter whether you have massage tools, you know, whether you're doing acupressure, whatever, the happy hat can just go along with that. It's just another really great uh, hammer in the toolbox, as it were. Mm -hmm. So, thank you. No Appreciate problem. That. I'm also impressed that it'll make them drop because it, I never connected that using it to clean a sheath would be advantageous. It's a fantastic <laughs> idea because Jack really does not like to drop. Well, Karen went and worked on a, a young stud colt a couple weeks ago. Tell him what happened with him, Karen. Oh. Uh, yeah, he was a very fidgety guy. But as soon as we put the happy hat on him, he started to calm down, relax, stood there, dropped, and he was, he was good. <laughs> we... Wow. Um, I, I did a, a session uh, one time out at a equine therapy center in Texas, a very large one, and we were training, oh, they had like five or six of their little, you know, 15, 16 year old uh, girls that hang out around the barn because they love horses and so they become volunteers for this therapy center. And the center has, oh, 40 or 50 horses that those horses have, have 150 different clients that ride them regularly. And they're very stressed, and many of them are cribbers. And we pulled out, they really, they, the center had been given a photopuncture system. They had a happy hat, but they really didn't know what it was for. So the first time it ever got pulled out was the day I was there. And we put it on this very nervous little gelding who was not too thrilled about all these people hanging around him and we were going to scan him. So we put a happy hat on him. And within about two minutes, all of a sudden, we had all the titters of the, the little 15-year-old blonde girls going, because, <laughs> of course, he dropped his penis immediately. <laughs> and all the, the barn manager and a couple of the other people are like, girls, you better just get used to seeing one of them around here. <laughs> wow. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's very common. 
um, that they relax completely. And if you can then make the whole sheath cleaning process um, something that's, that they like having done. My boys, they, they think sheath cleaning is just great. They'll lift a leg for you, you know. But, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the first time a thousand pound horse lifts his leg in the air so you can get better access, you're not too sure that you want that to happen, but. <laughs> yeah, really. Okay, Karen's asking, could the happy hat be beneficial for a pituitary gland in re reference to Cushing's? Well, Karen, that, that really, really depends on whether or not you've already started on the, um, the primary medication for Cushing's because the way that medication works is to kill the pituitary gland. So within about four to six months, you don't even have a pituitary gland there to support anymore. Their theory is, ooh, kill the pituitary gland so that now the tumor doesn't have anything else to eat and then you get rid, you know, then you'll support things that way. But of course, then you have a cascading failure down the whole endocrine system of the body. So would it be a great thing to do, especially for older horses? You bet. Thymus, thyroid, pituitary, all of that can be affected and help to be balanced, um, especially those tri triple heater and gallbladder points. But if, like I said, if they're if they're already on the meds, I I really doubt that it's going to make any difference at all. Though proper, really good nutrition can. A huge percentage of what's called Cushing's is really malnourishment. They are they are deficient, especially in magnesium, but also in many other um, trace minerals. And vets don't really they don't often do the blood tests to prove there's a tumor. They just look at the overall endocrine fail of the horse, the long hair, the the fat pockets, or you know the the them getting real thin all of a sudden. And they just call it Cushing's, but that doesn't really mean there's a tumor. But in general, they just go ahead and put them on the pergolide just in case, which is not really my favorite way of handling it. But you have to go with, you know, if you trust your vet and if you've had all the diagnostics done, you have to kind of do what the best thing is to be done. Okay, let's see. This horse has not been... Oh, killed by medication, but person is using natural herbs and alternative supplements. Oh, good for her. Well, then I think that a happy hat, you know, first I would definitely try to get a scan in and scan the horse and see, do we have any indications of endocrine imbalance? But also just, you know, in general, a happy hat for an older horse, especially, you know, keeping all of that energy flow going through what's often a very restricted neck after years of being ridden and carrying weight and all of those things. So it's never a bad idea. It couldn't hurt and it probably is going to help a lot. It's a great question. Now, uh, MJ, who's not on the call tonight, she has another name for the happy hat. She calls it the scarecrow hat because she says it gave her horse a brain. I kind of forced her um, to to try the happy hat when she when she was first getting her scanner and she was going to just get some hawk savers and I said no you're going to get a happy hat she, oh I'm like no no you're going to get a happy hat so she did and she rides reining horses and the first time she used it her she said her two horses switched temperaments completely the one that was always flighty and had a very short attention span just went to work and she showed me his first slide you know, the reining slide afterwards. And it was, I, this horse had just gone into a perfect V. And so she was, she, she emailed me in all caps going, oh my God, it's the scarecrow hat. It gave him a brain. <laughs> so I love that one. Hey, Darlene, we haven't heard from you. How's the far, I'm just listening. How's the far northeast going? Very good. You've thought out enough to go play with your horses now. I have. Thank you. Yes, it's been extremely hot, so it is time to play, yes. <laughs> well, at least it's not the six feet of snow. So. Yes, I am very happy. So outside of this topic of the happy hat and the pole, anybody have any questions about what's come up with working on horses this week?
Sandy, I know you had some pictures for me that we didn't get resized for today, but did you have any other questions come up? Um, I did just, uh, I'll, I'll try to send you what I have. I, I won't bore everybody with the details, but I, I couldn't exactly put in those dimensions that you requested. Um, and, uh, but as I'm looking at the picture, I'm like, oh my gosh, his back foot is really fat and swollen. And like, why didn't I see that? When I was down there on my knees, you know, in the picture up close, it, it looks like, like a porky, you know. It looks like he's got edema in, the, um, uh, I think it was his hind foot. Mm -hmm. That's getting kind of distressing. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't really know what I'm doing. I think that's how I feel. You know, I, I am happy that some horses, this one, two horses in particular that I could not get a reading on, for a while now they're starting to show points and it's always like inside foreleg you know uh, feet girth you know those are the spots there's always like the same spots on these two horses so I mean I'm glad I'm getting something and I do go back and I scan afterwards so that they have the points have cleared nice um, I guess I just can't sell it up to the owners to say this is what's going on and you know it, and and so I feel like I'm lacking and you're not supposed to <sighs> you are well, not you know, legally I, allowed to well yeah I, 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 I understand I, I, that I, um, I, you know I hate to say it but learning to be okay with this is where I'm finding energy blockage and that's all I can tell you Right. Okay. It, it, when they, it, worry about are the horses doing better? Are we seeing changes? Quantify how do they react to the session? How are they reacting in the 72 hours to a week afterwards? Do they have better? Right. Okay. That I, that I appreciate. It's just, you know, um, I did, I was, uh, attributed with improving the horse. I did a, um, a, a pre-dressage tune-up right before he went to work, and he didn't really tell a difference, but the next day or two days later, he felt a phenomenal difference in the horse. Nice. I guess you know what it is. I may be making a big difference, and I don't know it, because I'm also working on a horse that gets so pissed off if I have to work on him on the cross ties and I can't scan his freaking feet when I'm up to my knees in sawdust, you know, in his stall, all that crap, whatever you call that filler, and, and poop. So when I bring him out on the saw on, on the cross ties, he wants to kill me. You know, he's just I can't say kill me, but he's so irate and the happy head does nothing. He's just like, Look, my massage therapist works on me in my stall, what's your problem? And give me more carrots. And you know, why like can't you work on him in his stall? Because you know, the, the stall is so filthy, I mean, that I, I'm having a hard time working on his feet. I'm like knee pulling pads, stuff away. Darling, knee pads, I'm they not are... worried about me. I'm, I'm just saying I can't get in there. Not only that, he moves around too much. Uh, I'm chasing yeah, after him yeah. with the scanner like, it, like I'm, I'm trying to catch butterflies. I look like an idiot. Well, I will say, <laughs> I prefer to never use cross ties anyway because you don't get a real good reading for when they all of a sudden look at you and go, oh, my God, that was the spot, right? And, and because of this exact re reason, some horses really resent cross ties. So if there's any way possible to get someone to hold this horse. I can't. Okay. You know, <laughs> I like I said, if there was, if there was, it would be a great thing. If not, um, have you tried going with level seven on like the Yin Tang and, and uh, GV14? Just going in and doing the third eye and right above it. Third eye and right above it. So, no, I have right. not. Tried. Okay, try taking and sedating this horse. Let's see what happens. All right, you're going to take and all you're right. just going to put your lights here and up and oh. and right here. Okay, between the between the ears. If you can even Come just on. you know you can put them both in one hand even and hold them up his forehead for maybe a minute. Okay. And see a minute. If that calms him down. Okay. Okay. And if it doesn't, he's, he's honest. Yeah. I say if he doesn't, then what I want you to do is I want you to clear and balance his liver meridian. 
Okay. Anger. Let me start writing. Okay. Anger is stored in the liver. Okay. Right. Well, he's frustrated. he's really frustrated because he's had so many injuries. He was on stall rest in Flash July. Um, couldn't walk in February. Got him cantering in May. Then he injured himself again. He's been shock waved three times in the last week. Then they did a sonogram and said, Oh. Maybe it isn't a suspensory injury, it's our scar tissue. Maybe it's arthritis. After they put him through three shockwave treatments, mm. it makes me crazy. Well, no wonder he's, come along no wonder and he's, he's pretty like, frustrated. Yeah, so, you know, what we can yeah. do is try, you know, if you get, if since you have more access to this horse, you could try yeah. just clearing one pair of meridians each time you see him. Okay. Don't even you try clear. to scan. And what I mean by clearing, let me see, let me bring up a, pair, a picture. I don't have a picture of all the meridians. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, well, you will after the, you will after the class, obviously. It's just two more weeks. Hold on. Uh, it's killing me. I see the source every week, a few times a week. Okay, wait. I mean, I, well, I don't work at this point. Well, let's just look. We're just going to look at the liver meridian, okay? And... Um, let me go to this. I'm going to just go to a really simple picture here. The other thing with this horse is his spots keep moving around on me, you know? Well, that's they good. They really do. I clear one set, something different shows yep. up next time. You're peeling the onion. That's totally normal. That's a good thing. That means you're making progress. Okay, so here's the liver meridian, all right? This is going to start down here on the back foot, okay? Just put your lights here. Right. Uh -huh. They're going to come up the inner part of the, the hawk. So you could just do from uh -huh. here to here and kind of the front inside of this back leg. All right? Then a miracle occurs. It comes up through the body. You don't really get to this, this area here. You don't really get to, to touch. And then the liver comes okay. back out. Don't go any further towards the groin. You stop right there. Yeah, on the just stifle. right about it here. Correct. Okay? Okay. And then you're just going to come out and you're going to do along the back of the rib cage. Actually, I'm going to change my mind. I don't like this picture all that well. It's not really giving you a good enough indication of where you're going. Hold uh, I don't on a even second. Okay. Yep. There? Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm trying to find this picture, and I apologize. Um, I just wanted. I would just wanted to ask you a question while you were yes scurrying around. Um, you're familiar with those magnetic blankets, right? Mm -hmm. Well, this brother of the horse, they're they're owned by the same person, but not brothers. I started working him. He's got these horrible rope burns that look like scars that have shown up from on, on the inside forelegs from wearing the blanket. Ooh, well, I can't really speak to that. I've never, you know, it, that means he's probably rolling in the blanket or something. I don't know. Honestly, I, I, I'm familiar with them. I've worked on horses who've had them on, and I want them off for 12 hours before I scan a horse. But I, oh, I, really? I don't, yeah, because, well, they're again changing and shifting energy. So I'm not going to get a clear picture. Okay. Yeah, what, um, what uh, an expert told me, um, who uh, is now at Inlight Wellness Systems, he told me the difference between magnets and the light therapy is why they both interrupt disease patterns. Only the light therapy reprograms the body back to balance by using frequencies. But the magnets don't do that, you know, and because. I, supposedly, I also heard that they don't go as deep, but some people have clients believing that these magnetic blankets go deep, deep. I, well, I can't believe that they go as deep as that. It's, light, it's more that, that the magnets, to the best of our knowledge, the magnets work by attracting the iron in the blood and stimulating more circulation. Okay? So they can go very deep if left on long enough. Okay? But mm -hmm. um, but he's right. I don't believe they open. They don't treat from a, a photopuncture, an acupuncture type aspect. 
And so they're not rebalancing the chi, they're not rebalancing the flow of the energy through the body. Okay, so I'm going to come back here for a second. And what I want you to think about is bringing your lights here, right about where the ring thing, or excuse me, the, it, this is the inside, the medial aspect of that back leg. So be right about where your forefinger would be, okay? The inner front third of the leg coming up here to the hock, running up the inside of the leg, and then the other two, you're going to be right here in the bottom of the rib cage, liver 13, 14, okay? So if you just have your lights right in this section of the ribs, and you do just do two and five, and open this liver meridian, and let's just see how we react to that. How much of this is truly embedded anger? Okay? And you're gonna well, get he, a lot he, you're gonna get a lot more chance to do that while we're on you're gonna know these points really well when you're done with the class in July. Because he, he you know, he gives you the whites of his eyes. There are days he's like, Do not touch me. Mm -hmm. You know, I am pissed off at you today or I'm just pissed off. Right. Um, and other days I swear it's that Jekyll and Hyde this horse. And but he's really, really smart. Um you know, he, he does not tolerate fools. <laughs> I just don't like some days I'm a fool and some days I'm, I'm... Well, unfortunately, you can't control whatever else is being done with him and to him, and you have to really express that to the owner, okay? And so, you mm -hmm. know, that's where I would start, is I would start balancing that liver, all right? After, but first, just try, try going down the forehead. Just see what happens if you try sedating him, okay? Don't try to do okay. too much. Thank you. Sure. And the liver meridian, when, if I do the, that one, two and five, do you just do for 30 seconds each or more? Uh, yeah, usually, usually 30 seconds is, is good. Just go up and do each set of points, 30 seconds. Okay. Okay. Thanks. All right, anybody else have any questions, comments on what we're talking about? I'm just quietly listening. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, if there's anything else that somebody wants to um, talk about next week, send it in. All right. We're going to do a little bit of talking about, uh, um, oh, now I can't remember what next week is. Forget me. Forgive me. You'll get a notice soon. And I know we did not send out last week's uh, call uh, recordings. They're going to go out tonight. And then today's will go out in another couple of days. I had to live without my, my wonderful assistant, Karen, all last week. And I got way behind, and she's never allowed to leave me again. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I kept calling her going, are you back yet? Are you back yet? Are you back yet? Well, thanks, guys, for being here. I appreciate it. I know that it's getting into summer, and lots of people have other things to be doing. So... We appreciate you showing up, and next week will be, I think, the last class, last call before we go up to Colorado for the Finding the Path class. So we'll talk to you soon. Bye bye. Thank you, Dee. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.